And now it's time for the Deep Vein Thrombosis Prevention Halftime Extravaganza. From Hollywood, it's Jimmy Kimmel Live! Tonight, Katy Perry! From the Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs, Nicole Hartman! And music from Charles Wesley Godwin with Cleto and the Cleto. And now, Jimmy Kimmel! It's the day after the Super Bowl, which should be a holiday. We should not be working today. We should be at home throwing up guacamole or whatever we have. I hope you had a good Super Sunday. Uh, and congratulations. I want to start by saying congratulations to Taylor Swift and her Kansas City Chiefs. They, uh, you know what? They earned this. It was fucking game quite a finish. Guillermo and I were in Las Vegas at the game. You were the ice spice to my Taylor yesterday. <laughs> I have to say, we really, they should have the Super Bowl in Las Vegas every, we had the ultimate Las Vegas experience. We were in a box, watched the game with a, like a R Mount Rushmore of Las Vegas stars. Gordon Ramsay, Dan from Imagine Dragons, uh, Guy Fieri, Wayne Newton. We had uh, Kelly Clarkson and I were sitting uh, behind the Blue Man Group and Carrot Top, who was... <laughs> who was telling everyone he was Reba McIntyre, and uh, <laughs> you had fun? We had a great weekend, right? Yeah. I had a lot of fun, Jimmy. It was great. Yeah, we did. And it ended, uh, we were tired at the end, right? It oh, ended yeah. like this. This is uh, how the <laughs> ended, uh, Very good. Yeah. And uh, you, won, you won some money last night, too, right? Yeah, I won $710. We, yeah, we had the Super Bowl Square. And is it true you're taking the whole audience to Cabo Wabo after the show? Maybe, 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 maybe. Yeah, even outside of Vegas, there were a lot of betting yesterday. Uh, it was the most money ever bet in a single day. Some legally, most not legally. I was, you know, it's funny watching people when they bet between each other, they do it like on Venmo. Nobody wants to say it's for illegal gambling. But you can tell some of these transactions are a little bit suspect before the game. For instance, Josh D paid Greg M $100 for two muffins. And after the game, Greg M paid Josh $1,200 for bubble wrap, which a little suspicious. There are a lot of notable uh, Super Bowl commercials. Uh, and uh, well, one question I had is, where did Jesus get $7 million for a Super Bowl commercial? <laughs> Can he turn water into money also? It's a surprising amount of religion during the game. There were two ads for Jesus. There was an ad for an app that lets you pray along with Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> and if you didn't go for those, Scientology was there to ask if you were curious, which is, which I am curious, but mostly I'm curious about Mark Wahlberg. I mean, if, if I sign up for the app, will he know if I skip church on Ash Wednesday? How did, if I don't come back with a Marky Mark on my forehead, will he wrap me out to God? It's, we learned that Beyonce has a new album. We learned that... Uh, we learned that Beyonce has a new wireless plan. There are a lot of good commercials. Really, the only bad one I thought was um, this. You know, it's the. Uh, you know, you know how they get Matt Damon to be in a, a Dunkin' commercial. You didn't even have to pay him. It wherever you put out donuts, he just shows up. It's like a bird. This is only the second overtime in Super Bowl history. It was a, a disappointing night for the 49ers and their quarterback Brock Purdy, who played very well, especially considering the fact that. Brock Purdy is only 12 years old. And he really wanted to go to Disneyland, but it was not to be. The Chiefs won their third title in five years. And you'd think, you know, you'd think after three, 
wins in five years, you'd be a little bit over it by now. But Coach Andy Reid was so excited, he started tackling his own guys. Almost as sexy as Usher's halftime show. Of course, <laughs> every, um, every facet of the game was, uh, was in the shadow of a certain pop music superstar. This is the notification I got on my phone from the New York Times right after the game. This is a real thing. Taylor Swift watches Chiefs win Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, so did all the rest of us. <laughs> after the game, Travis Kelsey was uh, very excited. He grabbed the mic, he started to enthusiastically serenade the host city. Watch this and keep an eye on his girlfriend at the end. Viva Las Vegas! Viva Las Vegas! Viva! Viva Las Vegas! <laughs> Woo! Yeah, it's like, mm, maybe... Maybe we won't have kids. I don't know. It's... <laughs> Patrick Mahomes was MVP for the third time. He closed it out with a touchdown pass to wide receiver McCole Hardman, who claimed he blacked out when it happened. He didn't even know they won the game. Uh, McCole's here with us tonight. He's, uh, I think he's a like... Let's see if he can remember any of what happened last night. Now, immediately after the game, the hashtag rigged was trending. Again, from the people who believe football is fake and wrestling is real. But there's a, uh, <laughs> you don't know, there's this conspiracy theory that says the NFL rigged the whole season so Taylor Swift could win the election for Joe Biden. Who, who actually believes this? I don't know. But after the game, uh, Graham Potus or his social media team trolled these, the conspiracy crowd. He posted a laser eye dark Brandon meme. <laughs> It's just like we drew it up. Now, obviously, Joe didn't do that. It was posted at 10.50 at p.m. He'd been asleep for at least four hours when that went up. But he also posted before the game an old photograph. He's playing football on the lawn. 1987, my boys, Super Bowl Sunday. I hope you can take part in the age-old American traditions of eating great food, gathering with great friends, and watching a great game, which made me laugh because could you imagine Donald Trump tossing the ball around the yard? <laughs> With Eric and Don Jr. I mean, give it a... You know what? Close your eyes right now. <laughs> Nothing, right? Nothing comes. <laughs> this was Trump's Super Bowl pregame. Somebody hired a high school band and cheerleaders to pay him tribute at Mar-a-Lago. That's right. Next week on The Golden Bachelor, we... <laughs> how something like that happens, I have no idea. But it was a very busy day for, for Tan Marino. He started by lashing out at Taylor Swift. He posted, I signed and was responsible for the Music Modernization Act for Taylor Swift and all other music artists. Uh, Joe Biden didn't do anything for Taylor and never will. <laughs> There's no way she can endorse crooked Joe Biden, the worst and most corrupt president in the history of our country, and be disloyal to the man who made her so much money. <laughs> Besides that, I like her boyfriend, Travis, even though he may be a liberal and probably can't stand me. <laughs> now he's taking credit for how much money Taylor Swift. He's gone full Kanye West on us now. <laughs> Meanwhile, President Biden thought it would be a good idea to join TikTok yesterday. <laughs> Which, when you're his age, isn't every moment a TikTok? It's... <laughs> he also took to Instagram to post a kind of a half-baked Andy Rooney rant about shrinkflation. I don't know who came up with this idea. It almost feels like an AI-generated joke video. I promise you, it's, this is an actual message from the President of the United States. Super Bowl Sunday. If you're anything like me, you like to be surrounded by a snack or two while watching the big game. You know, when buying snacks for the game, you might have noticed one thing. Sports drinks bottles are smaller. A bag of chips has fewer chips, but they're still charging it just as much. And as an ice cream lover, what makes me the most angry is that ice cream cartons have actually shrunk in size, and not in price. I've had enough of what they call shrinkflation. It's a ripoff. I mean... You ever get the feeling maybe Trump and Biden are trying as hard as they can to not become president again? And 
Like, we just won't listen? It's, what the hell, what? Are we supposed to believe he's out grocery shopping? He's shuffling around Food Town, looking at the rocky road and going, dang it. And maybe it's good that the chip bags are smaller. We're fat, by the way. We, we can... <laughs> Meanwhile, Donald Trump, I don't know how he feels about the fact that they're selling six packs and fives now, but he spent the weekend <laughs> insulting Nikki Haley's husband, who's off um, serving his country, encouraging Russia to attack our allies, and making weird insults about his prosecutor in Georgia, which we put into a Super Bowl weekend edition of Drunk Donald Trump. <laughs> So what happened in Atlanta with Fani? S A N I Fani. How do you pronounce F A N I Fani? The Bachelor was on uh, ABC earlier tonight. Over the weekend, uh, they announced that coming next fall, we're going to see the first ever Golden Bachelorette. That's uh, one. <laughs> Did the Golden Bachelor. Now we have one Golden Lady, 22 elderly men, and a big basket of pickleballs. It will be. They say it's going to be the largest group of horny seniors since all the moms watching Usher last night. <laughs> but. Speaking of Golden, we are now less than a month away from the Oscars. I'll be hosting the show for the fourth time. And this one... <laughs> this is gonna be... It's gonna be a little different. We're starting the telecast uh, an hour early this year. But don't worry, we will still end an hour late. Uh, <laughs> there are some great movies to celebrate, but none more popular than uh, the movie based on that little plastic lady whose legs we bent backwards and whose hair we pulled out, uh, Barbie. And with that said, we are pleased to share the world premiere of the official promo for the 96th annual Oscars. Since the dawn of time, men have been getting lost. I am so lost. This is the story of one such dum-dum. He came upon a strange looking house and rang the doorbell. Hello? <laughs> hey man, what's up? Weird Barbie, nice to meet. You wanna come on in? Yes. Eric. Welcome. You must be midlife crisis, Ken. No. Lost everything in the divorce, Ken? No. Probably should have gone a size up in that tuxedo, Ken? No, I'm Jimmy. I'm Kimmel. Oh. I'm hosting the Oscars, and I'm lost, and I really need to get back to Hollywood. Did you find GPS threatening to your masculine day? I have just a thing for you, Kimmy Jimmel. Let's go. And behold, this is how you get to Oscars land. <laughs> okay, it's a pretty straight shot through the zone of interest, past past lives, over anatomy of a fall falls, and all the way to Carnegie Hall. Okay, but how did you get to Carnegie Hall? You practice, Jimmy. Then it's up the hill to Burton Academy, take a Jeffrey Wright, and go all the way to Los Alamos, New Mexico. I can't remember all this. I, just... I know, you're limited, but don't worry. We're taking the weird wagon. And so they pointed the weird wagon towards a colorful montage. To the Oscars, man. I like your car. Uh, hey, look, it's even weirder, Barbie. Hey, Bella. Hi. She's my cousin. Really? Yeah. Huh? No. And welcome to Osage County. Oh, look, they grow Italian people here. <laughs> oh, bellissimo. Is that rain? <laughs> no, it's Kennard Bernstein. Oh. Oh, my God, what happened to that guy's face? Born that way. Oh, that poor, incredibly hideous, disgusting, ugly man. Yeah. Put oh. these on to protect your eyes. Thank you. Oh, they're not see-through. I can't see! <laughs> Here we are, the Oscars. Wow, I didn't think we were gonna make it. Uh, thank you. Hey, no problem. So what? much. Whoa. Look at this. Yeah. You know, honestly, now that I'm here, I'm nervous. This is like, 
It's, I don't know if I can do this. It's such a tricky thing. He's right. It is a tricky thing. It's literally impossible to host the Oscars. You have to be extraordinary, but somehow you're always doing it wrong. Like, you have to make fun of people, but you can't make too much fun of people. And you have to give everybody enough time, but you can't go long. And you are the center of attention, but almost nobody cares you're there. You can never show off, never fall down, never fail, never show fear. Nobody says thank you, and everyone has something critical to say online. If it goes well, no one says anything. But if it doesn't, it's your fault. Yes, that's ex I think what you're saying is, Hosting the Oscars is even harder than being a woman. No, no, that's, that's not at all what I was saying. Wrong. I got in and out. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of this cool social media trend where you get it before the Oscars. Oh, hey, Ryan. Um, actually, I think the trend is to have in and out after the Oscars, actually after you've won the Oscar. Yeah. Oh, well, that's not gonna happen. Good thing Greta's got director in the bag. Oh, Ryan? Hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shane Greta. What? <laughs> Girls grow into women, but not all boys grow into men. Some remain hopelessly stuck in a loop of infantile foolishness. One of them will host the Oscars. Live, Sunday, March 10th, at a new time, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, on ABC. Thanks to David Kinn and America Ferreira, Ryan Gosling, Helen Mirren, and no apologies to Matt Damon. We hope you will watch the Oscars uh, on March 10th. Put on down, put on down.